Hi, everybody. Uh, <laughs> welcome. It's Natalie. Um, and this is day three of the 31 days of tarot. And I have um, all of my fun oracle decks to share. Yes, I do. So I'm going to share my top five oracle decks. Fun times. I feel like I'm repeating myself and I feel like this is kind of silly, but I'm going to do it anyway because why not? Um, this is fun and I kind of just needed to blow off steam at the end of the day. Can you tell it's the same outfit, same all of it as the previous two? Hmm. Hmm. We shall see. Okay. Uh, that's because... <laughs> That's because if I don't do it now, it might not ever get done. Because um, that's the way things have been going. Such is the nature of a liminal existence. That is just how it works. And that is okay. So let us talk about the fabulous Oracle decks that I have worked with this year that I really, really loved and appreciated. Um, I'm going to start right now with my absolute... Yeah, I'm going to say it. it. It's it is my favorite. Well, well they're all my favorites, aren't they? I can say that. They're all my favorites. So it's the one I'm most kind of like intensely intense about at the moment, which is saying a lot, right? Cuz when I get intense about stuff, I get intense and it, gets, it happens it's all very intense and all of that. Um and it is the Oracle of Initiation by Melissa Lucia. Ta-da! Um and it is one of the most it's really the oracle deck I have been waiting for um, all my life <laughs> in so many ways. Uh, so this one touches the same space in me that the Marielle Tarot does. And I'd been looking for an oracle deck that could work with me in that way. Oh, that isn't in the picture. That is on the card. I think. Maybe it is in the picture. Hmm. Uh, but it does touch that space, um, and that, that is what I was looking to find, and um, it's deep. It is a very, very deep and very powerful um, deck to work with. So this will be a big part of my focus this year um, in where I'm, you know, where I'm going with all of my practice and with my, um, where I'm hoping to go with, with my, my tarot work. Um, for myself. So really this is a deck that I'm only using for myself. Um, I do not feel like I've had the time to really properly dig deeply into it yet and that will be happening very very soon, very quickly. Um, I used it for my Wheel of the Year spread and it was just earth-shattering. Um, oh, you know the images are amazing you know, this is the product of her own journey and her own work. Um, and what I'm finding with decks is that the more that the creator of the deck is someone who's really articulating their journey and the depth of their journey and the fruit that they brought back from it that they're sharing with others, the more deeply I connect with, you know, with that work. Um, and where it also happens to resonate with my own experience, then it's just, you know, a very immediate like, oh! I have to do this, you know. Um, it's remarkable. It's remarkable. So, yeah, the, the backs are like this. I did edge it um, while I was sitting quietly, <laughs> probably doing nothing but waiting and, and hanging out um, at, a, at an appointment with my clients. Um, so Sharpie, you know, something you can do when you're, when you're kind of hanging out doing that. <sighs> um, and you kind of have to be there, so you can't be involved and engrossed in a book or on social media, but you need to do something with your hands to dissipate all the energy and the tension in the room. So that is what I do sometimes, and this is the um, Oracle of Initiation. Do I have its book? I think I took its book to work today in case there was space to read, but there was not. So it does come with, um, or you can get, this incredible book um, published on BookBub. And it's, I mean, it is just amazing. It's an amazing book, and, and she's really a remarkable author. You know, the images by themselves have great depth, and those along with the key words are enough in many ways to start on, um, 
revealing things, unlocking things, and so forth, but the book itself will take you that much deeper and more deeply into the Oracle and what it can do. Um, and I feel like I've really uh, scratched the surface with something that's not particularly sharp if that makes sense. Um, so a big part of my work this year will be diving into that much more deeply and not just scratching the surface, but tearing all of it wide open to get a good look. So um, watch the space. There will be more. <laughs> um, okay, so on a lighter note, yes, a lighter note, we have um, uh, one that will not shock anybody. It is one that I edged in pistachio. Um, it's the Amenti Oracle by Jennifer Sodini. Um, and I just, this one gets me every time. Um, it's beautiful. It is based on the principles of Mott. Um, and, you know, I really thought, okay, maybe I don't want to work with this one quite so much this year. And I realized I don't want to work with it quite so much on my channel in terms of doing weekly readings for people, but I actually really need to be working with it for myself. Um, because I'm in an 11 year, it is a justice year and, or a strength year, depending on whose deck you're looking at. And, um, I feel like this is needed. It's needed. So, uh, it will be continuing with me on my journey just in a different way. Um, yeah, I feel like I need to dive a lot more deeply into this deck for myself, um, without the distraction of attempting to... Um, read it with or for others. You know, I, I just kind of need to pay attention to my own journey with it for a little while. It's amazing. 42 Principles of Mott. And really, you know, the focus is on opening the heart space, making more space in your heart, lightening the heart, opening the heart. Um, and the messages in this are... Some of them are channeled. I know that they are. Some of them are channeled. When you know when you read the the guidebook, um, it's really apparent. And uh, I'm not sure where this one is going to fit within my practice, but it's going to be there. Um, it's just there. It's inevitable. It's going to be there. Actually, it just flashed to me, and it's clear. I don't need to worry about it. Okay, more about that in another video. Okay, so that was. Um, they're, they're all over my desk. Uh, okay, so that was the Amenti Oracle. Um, the next one, it's actually two decks, and I feel like they're kind of one. Um, the other one is one that I take with me in my little, you know, one of my little pocketbook thingies that I can stick in my purse or my, my um, doula basket. And it is the um, Santos and Signs Oracle by Melissa, again, Melissa Lucia. She's become a very important and very influential person for me. Um, her journey and the way that she articulates it and the way that she lives her life is very close to what I've wanted to do. And that had I not been distracted by my mother, really, um, and my relationship with my mother, I probably would have taken that a very similar route years ago um, and, ha and did not. And... Um, some of that is asking to be reclaimed right about now. Anyway, this one comes with me every day. Like how I just throw out those deep things and then just kind of move on. And I'm like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, it's just the way I've always been. I guess when you have that much Sagittarius and that much Scorpio in the same place, that's what happens. Um, you know, these are the Santos uh, that are in the, and I love it. You know, they're, I'm, I'm very glad I'm in a place right now where being with these is not, for me, is no longer laden with heavy amounts of, like, Christian um, guilt or, or um, difficulty in any way. I can just be with the images in a way. I love this one so much. Um, oh, it's one of my favorites. I love this one. But I can be with it in a way that, that it actually, it speaks deeply to me. And I find having it with me, like I will sometimes just sit quietly while I'm waiting for something or whatever. And I like to just flip through it because it's comforting. Um, you know, in here we see lots of images of, of, well, we see lots of Marian images, but we see lots of images of Jesus with an open heart. Um, <clears throat> with the focus on, on a heart, you know, in the heart space. Um, 
there's somewhere, you know, the heads are missing, right? But, and I, I kind of think that's wonderful. Uh, there are crucified Jesuses, of course, but the emphasis is not there. That's not really where that emphasis goes. I mean, look at that. The gaze and the, it's just, it's very powerful. It's the way that, that's one of my favorites in the whole deck. Um, yeah, it's the way that she's photographed and it's the way, I love this one. <laughs> this one gets me every time. I love it so much. Um, yeah, it's the way that she's done the photography. It's the angles that she's chosen and used. You know, she clearly has a, a photo, you know, a photography practice. Um, the backs too. The backs on the signs and the Santos are the same. So they are definitely of the same deck. I do keep them separate sometimes because I really love um, being able to just choose like one sign and about two or three Santos and then a couple of words. This, this one is my favorite. And the reason that I bought the deck, and it's the reason that I took her course, and I can't recommend that course enough. If you get a chance to do her her Santos and Signs course, you won't regret it. It is a beautiful um, experience that I'm still working through um, and taking in. That's a that's my second favorite with that Kachina. Um, yeah. They're just, oh, they're so beautiful. This one looks cool. This one, I love, anyway, I, obviously I care. I love the deck. It's, I, I think she's done an incredible job. There are no keywords. There's no guidebook as of yet. Um, it also has teeny weeny little cards here like this with this beautiful image on the back um, of all of them. And then, oops, keywords that you can work with. And I, I have been working with them. I love them. Again, I'll just choose, you know, it's a deck where you've got like all of these possibilities and options, um, you know, and they all come together in various ways and it's wonderful. So I, I've been, I carry it with me because I, I find it, the energy, just the energy of the deck is comforting um, on some level to me. And I, I don't know how to articulate it yet, but it's, it's just the truth. Um, with this deck, for that course, we also were, and this one, including these as one, um, we worked with uh, what what she is calling, what, what Lucia is calling the um, uh, funky fortunes. And so you have this bag full of all of these fun, you know, stickers and cards from like decks of all sorts of stuff. Um, here's one that came with my deck when she sent it. It came, well, it came with one of them. I don't remember if it came with Oracle of Initiation or with Santos and Signs or Funky Fortune, but this is one that Melissa made. Um, yeah, and I, you know, oh, I love this one. Um, you know, you can get so much. You get everything you need. It's funny. I, Queen Osset did a video recently um, on her channel for Kwanzaa. I want to say it was for... I just don't remember. I don't remember if it was Kuumba or if it was Imani. It might have been Kuumba. And it was for um, creativity and being able to read and get what you need from any kind of deck. And really the way that she unfurls them and lays them out. And it could be with like a child's ABC deck. Um, I think at one point she, you know, she just pulled all these different decks that you wouldn't normally associate with divination and she was telling a story, and it, it had the feeling of just ringing with truth. Um, and really, that I think in part, to some extent, not in the same, it's not being used the same way exactly, but it has a similar feel to it in terms of intent, which is get what you need from what's in front of you, right? Which is very Zen-like in many respects, Um and that's what uh, Melissa Lucia is doing with this. Like, here's a, a trivia card, right? Um, oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Her luminous eyes, thoughts that whisper to my heart. Farewell, TV. Farewell, six million dollar man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the ability to tell story. You know, Danny Boy is on there, but then it's a sitcom. But, you know, they're... 
the the possibilities of getting you know here's from a um this is from an old maid deck right um molly moo you can get what you need and it's it's playful and it's fun and it's oh that was one that that melissa made it was in my deck um yeah playful simple easy you know this one from a card game you know the words the images you know even something just like um, violoncello, I think violoncello or the cello, you know, that card by itself could be written or, you know, could be read. Um, you know, they're just, they're amazing. So anyway, those are some of my, my um, Funky Fortunes Oracle cards that I had sitting stacked and one, you know, over, over there, over that way. Um, it's wonderful and I, I really, I can't recommend it enough, you know, her, her work and her cards and it's amazing. Okay, moving on, um, but in a similar realm, uh, another deck creator who I've really grown to love and appreciate and I haven't worked with this deck nearly enough, I think, but it's not quite on my rotation at the moment. I kind of make up where I'm going to go, and I'm just going to let the road lead where, where it goes, but I'll work with the intentions I set and see what happens, right? Um, this is the, uh, ah, everything's falling. Um, <laughs> this is the way it goes. It's the messenger cards, right? Beautiful by Sandra Coons, and she sells these on Etsy. She also has a website and she does readings and I think she is a prolific and wonderful artist and very, very clever and talented. Um, and I've really loved working with her cards. You know, this, I don't feel like I've worked that deeply with this deck. Again, though, this was one of the decks that I turned to for refuge in August when I was having such a painful time. And it really was very comforting. You know, the, the images are beautiful. The, the One of my favorite cards of all time. Um, the images in here are exquisite, and the messages that she writes in the book are too. So if you're looking for something that has some real depth, um, real depth to it, you know, that, that will take you to the next level, this is one of those decks that does it. And I feel like I want more of these in my life. I have a list of decks um, recently made by some some creators in the community that uh, I really would I, I'm are on the list, you know, and kind of some I have an intention for, others I don't. Um, and sometimes you just you know I like to have intentions for things before I buy them or engage them, but you know sometimes that's not always the best way to move forward and. Um, I make space for things to evolve because it's necessary. Um, so another one that I, I have come to fall in love with and has been a lifesaver on multiple occasions of varying types is the Manifesting Your Greatness Oracle by Amy Chase. Um, and I haven't been in touch with Amy for a while. I feel like I should reach out. Um, Amy, if you're watching, hi. I hope you're doing well. Um, I miss you. I enjoy chatting with you. Anyway, this is a gorgeous deck. It is um, it is a deck I've used a lot on my um, on my Etsy page because one of my best selling, most favorited readings that I have there is for this deck, and it is a self uh, compassion or self love reading with this deck. And every time I do them, every time someone requests one or buys one or texts me and says, I see this was on your on your Etsy page. Is there any way I could just pay you directly through PayPal and we'll call it a day? Um, you know, or, or a client says, I need something that's just going to help me through a crisis. I pull this one out and it goes down beautifully every time. I mean, it people people warm to this deck. They warm to... Um, the self-love readings with this deck and all of that came through just some some really gentle interactions with um, 
I think it was Nina on uh, Shuffle Tarot and Two Rocks Tracy um, and Amy. And suddenly it was like, I should do this and offer it on my Etsy store. And it has been, it has been a beautiful one to have. Um, again, every time I pull this one out somewhere at an event, people love it. They really enjoy readings with it or they enjoy picking it up and flipping through it. They're like, oh, this is so not scary. It reads really well, even though it's not the same creator. Check out that uh, edging. Um, even though they're not the same creator, it reads beautifully and happily with the Apparition Spirit Speak deck, too. You know, they both have such a gentle, friendly flavor. Um, I also wonder how well this one would read with the um, Inspiring Alien Tarot. I feel like they would be good friends. This little guy in the Inspiring Alien Tarot, might have to, might have to think about that one. Um, because I noticed today that Alvia of Inspiring Alien um, Creations is coming out with a new version of the deck. So watch out for that. So that is the uh, Manifesting Your Greatness Oracle. And finally, not last, but not in any way least, and I did not bring out the damn book. Why did, or the, um, I didn't bring out the box because I don't use the box and I don't use the guidebook. Um, it is the Oracle de Reflets. Um, oh, ooh, her name. Name completely escapes me. I love this oracle. It is beautifully drawn. Okay, name name of creator. Celia Melville. Um, Celia Melville. She has a channel. She's made a couple of several decks actually. Um, I think she does the Lily White and the Lily Black Tarot. Um, and I know she's got a Lenormand. This Oracle deck is brilliant. I don't use the guidebook, really, particularly, uh, with it. Not because it's not good, but because what you see is really what you get. The things that you would normally associate with um, lightning, for example, and the tower, they're all part of this. And then just read the card. You know, read the card, read the strokes, read the marks, read the circumstances, and you're good. Um, this one is a great reader. It reads like a Lenormand, kind of. Um, it has a very fortune telly um, kind of aspect to it, but it also has a higher kind of spiritual intent behind it as well. Um, you know, the camel can kind of store things up and get through a dry spell or a desert, right? So what does that tell you? Uh, about its capability. That's a happy camel. That camel's on top of the world. That camel's going to survive, right? Um, I love this one. This one comes up for folks a lot. Uh, this is one that I've used a lot reading on the lines, um, uh, doing predictive readings and, and some fortune telling, um, usually with, you know, reading with a couple of other decks. And it, it's, again, it's just a brilliant reader. I love this Fox card. So um, I don't know if it's still in, if she's still got copies of it. I went on the wait list and I pre-ordered when she, um, mm, they're so good. Look at that. Um, th here we go, right? The Lotus. That's got a very deep spiritual connotation to it. And yet depending on the reading, depending on the way those cards are coming out, it can change. Uh, this has been a, a, a really good reader. This one is a great reader. You can read it in many respects the way that you would, I think anyway, because I'm not very good with Lenormand yet, but I would say that you could probably read it uh, in a way that you would work with a Lenormand or, or with a tarot. Certainly you can use the spreads the way that you would use a Lenormand or tarot spread. Um, and it works a treat. It works a treat. All right, so those are my top, um, those are my top um, Oracle decks, at least for right now, because <laughs> that changes all the time. Uh, some of them change and some of them don't, but you know, that's how, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Yeah, these are the ones I love the most. These are the ones I work with the most, probably. So anyway, day three of uh, the 31 days. I don't know how many more I'll be able to participate in or be participating in, but what fun. Oh my gosh. Okay, 
so that's that for now. And um, thanks again, everybody. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> I hope you are too. I'll hopefully talk to all of you soon. Bye.